Guys, welcome back to Rise and Grind. Happy Monday. It is January 15th. We are 15 days into the new Can year. Can you believe that? 15 days. I want to know one thing. Like, one thing I want to know is, is everybody already off to their New Year's resolutions? Are they already done? Because statistically, people say that after the first, I think it's like, I think it's 14 days. The first two weeks is when everyone stops doing everything. I think it's I like 80 it. plus percent of yeah. people who made their New Year's resolutions stop it in uh, the Which 14th. Which is so silly because I think it takes 28 days to create a habit, right? 90. 90 days to create a habit. Yeah. So you really can't give up until. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought it was like 30 days as well. Yeah. So I, I was, but I was reading a book recently and literally it said that it takes 90 days to actually legitimately form a, like a true solid habit. I mean, that makes sense. It's so long though. It is really long. <laughs> For people who are like, damn, I got this one goal. It's like, like 90 days is a long time, but I yeah. guess, I don't know if that's a new adaptation, but that's what's saying 90 days. So if you're watching this, have you already given up on your New Year's resolutions? If not, what are you doing about them? Are you getting after it? How about yourself? Did you make New Year's resolutions? I did make some New Year's resolutions and they're all habit building, which is Good. really hard. That's important though. You know, because you're fighting the little voice in your head that's like, oh, you're comfortable. Just, right. you know, don't right. get, you don't have to get right. out of bed or you don't have to get up and do that one thing. Which, but... is so, which is so difficult. Right. But that's the enemy. That's why they always say like your, your comfort zone is your enemy. And mm -hmm. it's tough to realize that stuff to see that. But it's the truth. I mean, you really think about it. Most of us don't go out and venture out of like our things that we really want to accomplish because of that fact that they're like, well, do I have to do it? Or, you know, I'm comfortable in this scenario. I'm comfortable in this relationship. I'm comfortable, in whatever, you, you know, let's right, go on. Right. So they don't ever take that step. So again, back to it, you know, it's Jan 15. We're just saying, is it, you know, time for you? Are you guys, has that, people already given up on their news resolutions? That's the question. And if you haven't noticed, I'm nasally. I, I probably hear my nasaliness <laughs> in the live here because literally, no joke. It went from 60 degrees this weekend. I know. If you're in the New York Tri-State area, literally it was 60 degrees. Yeah, like, it was gorgeous on Saturday. I was outside literally with my son. We were outside running around. And then later that night, it was, I believe, like 40 yeah. or 30. And then it was snowing yesterday was a little snowing. bit for a second. Now it's 20 degrees. It's freezing It's out. It's cold. Yeah. This is not the weather you want to walk your dogs outside in, but I have to. But I have to. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things. But anyway, so excuse my nasalness mm -hmm. because I am uh, the weather's up and down and these seasonal allergies kill me. Yeah. This has been a tough year for me. I don't know people on the East Coast. For a lot of people, it's yeah, like everyone has a little a little sickness. Starting yeah, the year. well, I'll say people in the Northeast, right? Because because right. those Floridians down south ain't getting this. But anyway, um, we have a lot of good stuff to talk about. Obviously, the the new year is still kicking off. We're only 15 days in. We're two weeks in. Um, the vibe again we're going after is continue those goals. Keep pushing forward. I did mention, um, I believe the first, uh, pod of the year with you, um, that, uh, I downloaded the app headway. Um, yeah. and we had Sean who always, uh, watches it and asks me, he's like, you should put up how many books you've read so far. So how many books do you think I read so far? Hmm. Okay. So two a day and you started that last week. Uh, no, two weeks ago. All right. You've got to be at like 15 to 16, 15 to 16. Yeah. You think? You need more? <laughs> I've been close. Like, I'm almost at, like, I think, like, 30. No way. I'm not even kidding. Do you feel like you're retaining the information? Like, yes. do you feel like it's impactful? Yes. What I, the, the funny part is, again, this is the app headway. So if you are a busy person or if you're somebody who is not a good reader, you know, you just can't sit there, you get fidgety, that's me to the T. I want to read. I have every intention of being a reader. And I get down, I sit down, I get through halfway through the book or I start doing whatever. And then I just never be – I can't just get bored. I get yeah. bored of it. So with that being said, Headway has helped me tremendously. But do, do I get impact from it? Yes. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, right? Like what's a book you've read? Actually, you um, love the, the the 25 agreements, right? Four agreements. Yeah. <laughs> so so you like the 30 agreements. Uh -huh. and But like if I were to ask you, like summarize the book for me, you're going to bring out key points, right? Yeah. And and even though you read all that stuff, and, and don't get me wrong, it's good to have all the context. Right. You're only going to talk about the things that were major like impacts to you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like about Headway is that if, and honestly, um, cause I'm in like a men's group and in the men's group that I'm in, um, I put it out there and they, almost everybody was like, Oh, I tried Headway before. It's not enough context. Like, but <clears throat> the one thing that I really liked that one of the guys in the group said was, there you go, Sean, babes. <laughs> but the one thing that, um, you know, that one of the guys in the group said was he was like, I, I used it in the past to see if 
books were interesting enough for me to even pick up. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so I liked that. So I like that. So too. again, I'm thirty. I'm thirty books deep in two weeks. Do you have a favorite one so far? Um, my favorite one right now. Uh, let me think about that because I've been dipping through. You know what? I think my favorite one right now um, is it's called. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peaceful. Hmm. Um, and essentially, it's just. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm wrong. Wrong. Because there are two. Of these are very similar. The power of now. Oh, I the, love the power of now. That's yeah, a great book. The, yeah, the power of being present. And so that book to me so far has been great, especially being an entrepreneur and just a busy person. Like when my son is around or my or my wife or my family and stuff or even my friends, I'm always just thinking about the next things or work or whatever. And um, it just goes to show you that like, you know, the, my big takeaway from the power of now is that the past no longer exists and the future doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So all you have is right now. Um, so anyway, you know, there's a lot of good things in that, but anyway, so I'm, I'm 30 books deep right now. Um, I'm, I'm at this point, so if I'm two weeks and 30 books deep, I can't even imagine how far I'm going to go. I'm wondering, like, are there enough books to keep I might, honestly, throughout the year? I don't know, but, but the one thing I will tell you though, is that at the end of the day, um, if you're not, if you're not a good reader, it's just a good, it's a good app to help you become a better reader, right? Again, Headway, um, they're not a sponsor yet. So, but you know, we're working on that. But anyway, with that said, um, you know, so 30 books deep, um, check that out. I think it's great. Um, it gives you some good key concepts. I think it's only like $80 for the year. Um, it's not, not expensive. Bad. Um, you know, so it's not terrible. No. Um, when you think about how much you spend on a book, one book. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good right? point. I mean, realistically the last, what do you, do you know what the last book you bought was? Um, I do. It was the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so you're what kind of book? But that—that's that? the last physical book that I bought. Well, and it was, well, what is that? Is that a fiction? Yeah, it's just oh, like okay. a story, right? Seven husbands. Yeah, it's it's a good book. It's really interesting. But um, I think it was like fifteen dollars as wow. opposed to right. Audible. You know, I have some all of these credits that are right. happening, and I can read. The last book I bought was Ray Dalio's uh, Principles, mm. um, and. Uh, I think the book was like thirty dollars. So it's really, again, it's like almost it's almost there, right? So yeah. already at this point, if I bought all these books thirty times the minimum fifteen, like you know, it's, it adds up. So bottom line is, I think it's a good resource. I hope everybody is getting after their New Year's resolutions and goals. But you know, I keep I keep, and I'm curious where everyone thinks about this. Okay, I keep hearing this, and it keeps making me change my mind on it. Um, and uh, I'm a big advocate now. Um, obviously, your husband Chris had this, and a lot of people I know had this before me, and I didn't, I didn't buy into it, but I did you know, about a year ago, actually, no, like six months ago, um, the whoop app on your, oh, on your thing. Yeah. But one of the chief scientists there, um, she's a badass. Um, she talks about how she does She said new year's resolutions and goals, um, are essentially, you know, for, you know, for people who, I don't know how to say it in a not negative way, you know, <laughs> she pretty much said beeps, you know? And so, I was like, huh? And then she she went on to deliver that if you live a life of your values and your principles, um, that you don't have to have those things. So, my curiosity is: Do you have goals every year? Do you have New Year's resolutions? If you do, pop. If you do, say yes, I do. If you don't, tell us why you don't. Um, I'm curious. I, I my my, my take on it is: I like I, again. I you know I'm I'm stick to my my values, mm -hmm. but. I like being motivated by the goals I set. So I don't know. It's it's. A, what do you think about that? I don't know. I feel like, well, like we were talking about, it's all about habits, right? So if you create good habits yeah. and they're in line with your principles and your yeah. values, yeah. then you're going to have them year after year. But everybody finds motivation differently. For me, I need something new to aspire to right. each year. It just feels like <laughs> right. I'm aiming towards something. Otherwise, I personally feel a little bit lost. Mm, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious, what do you guys think out there? Um, put it in the comments um, and let's dive in. Let's get after it. All right. The first trend that we're starting with is Google's new policy. And this is really interesting. Not only is this policy impactful for Google ads, but it's actually trending now on Instagram and TikTok for mm. those who are have recently watched Leave the World Behind and everybody's up in Still arms about, it, yeah. should watch it. Yeah. It's interesting. The Obamas made it. Oh, I heard that. Soon. I heard that. It's really interesting. Um, and now Google's coming out with a shift where they are essentially clarifying the definition of sensitive events and saying that you cannot advertise on Google if you are leveraging a sensitive event, which could be a social, cultural, like political, Sandy, and yeah, time. civil emergency. <clears throat> They're even saying that it's uh, terrorism or mass violence. So. 
Um, yeah. yeah, you can't advertise, which we saw throughout the pandemic, right? During COVID-19, yeah. in the hype of COVID-19. so many Everybody people, and their mom was selling COVID-19 tests. Oh, absolutely. The <laughs> tests or, um, you know, cleaning materials right. for it or right. Right. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And we learned from that, but it was also four years ago. So it's interesting that it's coming out now. I know it's also an election year coming up, so they may not want anybody to um, try to advertise to gain mm -hmm. political gain. You know? Yep. Yep. So I mean, listen. The, so so to put that into perspective for you, what that means for Google is that again, let's just use Hurricane Sandy as an example. Mm -hmm. um, for anybody that was on the East Coast and you know dealt with that, um, again, if you are a roofer, a builder, somebody who uh, is a home elevator, right, like that uh, does the home elevations, or I don't know what you actually call that. Um, but anyway, um, so if you are in that business and Hurricane Sandy happens, you're not going to be able to advertise on Google mentioning or going to that sensitive event. Um, I'm sure this will be worked out, um, but it's tough. You know, Google is the problem with Google. It's like the government. Right. It's like you can, you can, you know, cry and, and, and whine, but it is what it is, unfortunately. So that this tough part is like, there's a, there's a um, roofing company in my neighborhood and essentially their whole spiel is instead of you paying out of pocket, they're going like door to door. And um, instead of you paying out of pocket, they, they essentially go in and they say, okay, there was hail two weeks ago. So they're going to use the weather to leverage your, the insurance company. Oh, um, so the insurance pays for it, right? Anyway, long story short, companies like that who market and advertise towards things and whatever happening, now, at least until this gets figured out, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, and if it gets figured out, right? Or it might yeah. just remain as a yeah. sensitive event because there are a lot of changes coming to the way that we target keywords and the way that we target interests, which we'll talk about later on uh, as yeah. well. So. Yeah, so keep that in mind. That's that's a that's a big challenge. Yeah, but speaking of Google Ads, there's also really limited support. It supports at an all time low. Right yeah, because right now, listen. At the end of the day, people have again. There's been a lot of new businesses that have popped up since COVID. Right, a lot of people who were career driven people left corporate America. One of them actually we just had on a podcast. She was in the corporate banking world, then left and started doing like bouncy house and event event stuff. Um, but a lot of people started a business, right? And people know typically, you know, Google is where buyers are, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for, you know, your, your target a consumer, typically if they're Googling something, it means they're ready. They're, they're doing research. So it's a good area to find them. So it's trying to corner your, you know, corner your potential leads. And anyway, with that said, you know, right now there's, th there's the most advertisers that there's ever been like ever on Google, which makes sense. Cause obviously every year you're going to add some more, right. lose a couple. But this is the most that's ever happened. And the, it's like just picture being in the New York on the Holland Tunnel on a Friday for Christmas weekend. Okay. It's like bananas or better yet, New Year's Eve. It's like Crazy. there's there's like you can't get in touch anybody. So what Google is recommending, right? So they know that this is an issue and they don't – not that they don't care, but do they? I don't know. I'm not going to say they don't care. But what I'm going to say is that they don't have any plans to go in and to change and to get more humans on. Because their goal is to make everything autonomous through Google support, like and the forums and all that stuff. So what they keep saying is if you have a major issue, create a ticket in Google form. Right. That is the best way to get it addressed. And I know a lot of people out there, again, we shared this last week where there's somebody I know that's in the barbershop field who his ad account got suspended. And guess what? Now he's just kind of shit out of luck. Um, you know, he and, it, and that brought him his source of business. Right now, he's not getting that source of business and it's hurting him. So again, the best thing that anybody can do is go utilize Google support forms. Um, it's when you go to Google, the help, and then it'll bring you to forms and you type one in, you can submit one. They, they say that's the best way for you to get like essentially through what you're trying to get through. So um, that's the only thing they're doing. So they're, so for people out there, they're like, I'm going to sue Google because of this review, or I'm going to sue Google because my ads are down like, and I'm not making any money. It's tough. You, there's nothing you can do, right? No. Besides just keep submitting these forms. That's the only thing they say. They're aware of the scenario and they're just going to keep doing the best they can in the forums, but they don't plan to pick up the phone. So keep that in mind. It's tough. And if you're yeah. really stuck, reach out to us and we might be able to help you. Yeah. Time. Yeah. We've helped, we've helped a lot of people um, in those scenarios. So obviously if you're a Google ads yeah. account or whatever is suspended, or if you have stuff you need help with in Google, we're always happy to help. Yeah. But ultimately again, with Google, they're just like the government. I'll never forget the one time um, I was taking a train somewhere, which, you know, I hate public transportation, mm -hmm. but I was taking a train somewhere and um, the train was 15 minutes late and it was freezing outside. It was like the middle, it was like, couple years back but and i'm sitting outside and i'll never forget this is me and like three other people 
And <clears throat> so it was 15 minutes late. And then it was 30 minutes late. And then it came down to they essentially said um, that the train was canceled. Oh. So I was at a place where I'm like, damn, like, what the hell do I do here? And this, there's an old guy next to me. And the old guy was like so pissed off. And he goes, you know, what can you do? You know, th there's nothing you could do. Like, what are you, you, you going to complain that they can change something? No. Yeah, that he's, is like, true. he's like, it's like, they're like the government, the train systems. But it's like Google, same thing, right? It's like, what are you going to do? You can, you can bitch, moan, complain, whine, but nothing is going to change. All you have to do is, you know, you know, you got to, if you can't beat them, you got to join them, right? Yeah, so you got to find a different way yeah. to get what you need done. So Google Forms is the best way to get through to Google, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Hopefully that changes soon, but yeah. Um, these platforms are getting really difficult to work with or an advertise on. And Meta, um, of course, over the past few years has been changing their targeting, who mm -hmm. you can target Right. after all of these different privacy concerns. But now they are removing even more detailed targeting mm -hmm. from their ads. So they're actually recommending now that as a business, you should use broad targeting. You shouldn't target anybody mm. and see who comes in and then retarget from that point. So, mm. which is, that's not a bad strategy. What I would maybe do is leverage your or get anyone who's engaging with you organically and try to retarget them that way. Yeah. To get some detailed targeting. Otherwise, just because of the privacy concerns, you're not able to target somebody <laughs> who um, likes specific cars or right. has a certain job anymore. So it's yeah. become really difficult. Which I hate, by the way. I mean, but I the bottom line though is, again, it comes down to, you know, it's, you gotta, you gotta attract the masses and you're going to spend a couple extra dollars on people you don't want to, but in theory, you might get in front of more people who might spread the word about you. So you gotta look at it optimistically because it is what it is. There's nothing right. you can do about it. Right. So we got, you know, we just got to get after it and, and make better, you know, make better creatives and ads that are going to attract more people, mm -hmm. you know, or get you in front of people. Like as an example, if, you know, you're selling a product. And now you can't really target specifically, but you get it in front of, you know, the masses and it's a product that somebody might say, oh, you know, my grandmother could use this. I'm going to share this with her or you want to make it more shareable content. So it's relevant to not just because now you can't get detail targeting. Right. So you got to make it more relevant to the masses, which I know is tough. So that could be shared. Right. Right. Um, all right. We're moving into repurposing your content. And how to choose the best thumbnails, which yeah. is so important. Yeah. So one of the things that's so important, guys, um, you know, year over year, we're looking at different things and we're saying to ourselves, what are the best videos? What are the best reels? What are the best, you know, content that do the best? And one of the things that we're seeing is that at the end of the day, like most people, like again, like the Gary V's, the, the Tony Robbins, like the major, major influencers on social media, they repurpose content. <laughs> all the time. And the funny part is that most people never notice because of the fact that they use a different thumbnail. And one of the things that they do is they go in, they create content, they test it with a, with a thumbnail, they put it out there. And typically they, they use different, you know, um, ad assets, right? I'm mm -hmm. sorry, thumbnails. So they'll, they'll do two or three different thumbnails, with the same content, whichever one performs the best, then they'll put it out there. I've even seen some people put it out there and test it and put a $5 boost budget behind three of the same posts with three different thumbnails and whichever one does the best, that's when they actually post. Oh, that's smart. Um, so at the end of the day, repurposing content is, is, is fine, right? If you have relevant content from the past, put a different thumbnail. If people don't know what a thumbnail means, essentially what that is, is when you post a reel or you post, you know, different content like that, you can put a picture over or on YouTube, right? Like it's the cover photo, essentially. It's the thumbnail. So that's what they see before they click the video that attracts them. So most people spend a absurd, like most of the influencers you watch on, on social media, on YouTube, on all these different various platforms, they are utilizing the shit out of this theory and this method because they need that thumbnail to be the, the, the you know, in better, I mean, I guess in better words, it's like clickbaity. Right? It has to be clickbaity, yeah. right? It has to be something that they say, wow, I'm interested in this video or I'm not. Mm -hmm. So having that said, repurposing content, maybe you've made in the past or testing different different types of content with different thumbnails is going to show you what type of content is going to help you win the best. And that's one thing that I was, you know, that, that we, you know, I've been testing and that we're going to continue to do here because at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's important to realize that the thumbnails and those first pictures, you know, they say the first like three seconds of a video is what's going to make somebody say, I want to watch this or don't. Right. The thumbnail is what gets you to that first three seconds. So you don't even get that three seconds if your cover photo or thumbnail isn't good. So you have to have both. But 
additionally, one thing I do want to mention, um, uh, speaking of all this, is that you know we're seeing here, and there, there's data that shows that AI right now. So there is studies right now going for AI versus humans creating content and what's performing the best, meaning thumbnail, caption, the whole thing. And right now, by over 60%, the humans are getting a 60% higher engagement rate than AI is. Wow. Now, having that said, what what that what this what this um, you know this study has shown is that they went on to say, okay, now we know humans are making better content, you know, at this point still. So now let's try this. So they went in and from the best performing assets that the obviously human content created better. They mixed it with AI and said, okay, this is the performing assets that won. Obviously, most people know that when you're doing ads or you're doing social content, and you want it to keep growing and get better and better and better. You have to keep evolving those ad assets. You can't have the same creatives just living out there forever. So it said, okay, go in there, take these winning assets and make them better. And when it, when AI combined with the human content that did well, um, it wound up getting 70% higher reach. So once AI is essentially has its hands on something that's already working, that's when the magic typically happens. Hmm. So just something to keep in mind, right? Because most people think AI, it's the best, it's just that you need to 100% understand that it has to be fed, you know, the, the, the best stuff, right? right? And so that's what we're learning that it's not creating the best stuff in the beginning. We just saw that in the study. So you have to use it with things that are already winning to make it even better. Right. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Most people probably think, Oh, well, AI can definitely outperform people or AI can definitely whatever. And I'm mm -hmm. sure in some cases it can, but right now it's good to see that people are are still way 60% higher. Um, it's a massive, uh, massive that is difference the big in performance. Difference. It's a huge yeah. gap. So um, you know, it's not it's not where everybody thinks it is just yet. Um, and I've shared this before, I'll say it again. With AI, a lot of people are already starting to see when people are using AI to do things. So, you know, the consumers are very aware of it. They know when AI has been, ChatGPT Chachi, has been used in a comment or to give somebody advice or whatever, because it doesn't typically sound like your tonality. The bullet points are obvious. The way AI and the way ChatGPT Ch explains stuff mm -hmm. is so, it's so obvious. It, it makes it so, so obvious that it's ChatGPT because it's set, it's explained itself the same way every time. Right. So right now, um, you know, it's, I think that's a good thing for all of our creative people out there, our copywriters and social media people who are like fearing for their jobs. Um, I said it once, I'll say it again. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that this tool is here to help make us better, not replace us, because it's never going to be able to understand an individual's, you know, um, an individual client, as an example's personality and vision. Us being humans, some of, we're in a roller coaster ride most of the times. You know, with with doctors, attorneys, it depends on their moods, right? <clears throat> what they're going through. Definitely. Through. Sometimes they don't want you to post this content. Sometimes they don't like this content. Right. AI needs to be given direct, specific, very, very specific content. So it's like you need the humans, you need us uh, marketeers to yeah. get us rocking and rolling. You need the brains and creativity, and AI is the execution. That's really what all it comes down to. Is it makes it better? What's yeah, it, I think and it, puts it the cherry enhances on top. it, right? Yeah, yeah, it puts a cherry on top. In my Definitely. Opinion. So yeah. All right. And the last topic we have here is Gen Z trends for 2024, kicking mm. off the year with some trends to look forward to. Okay. Um, pretty recently, Gen Z started this trend, ins and outs, mm. where they essentially post content of what they feel like is in and what obviously mm. is out. And the major trend across Gen Z is that the prior prioritization of self-care is in across oh, the yeah. board. Everybody wants to focus on themselves, focus on their well-being, yep. which is really great. And that's mm -hmm. actually one of our, you know, new core values yep. as well. So yep. we're trendy. Yeah, look at this Pretty going. cool. Um, Saltburn was an, um, another big trend. Mm. Have you heard of um, Saltburn? Have no. you watched this yet? No. So it's a dark comedy film that came out right before Christmas. And the reason why it's trending is because a lot of this Gen Z demographic decided – I'm going to watch it at home and it's mm. not a movie that you would watch with your parents because it's a little spicy okay. in some ways. Okay. Um, and because of that, their parents' reactions, their own reactions to some of the yeah. films went completely viral on social media mm. um, along with one of the uh, songs, Murder on the Dance Floor, which is now a trending <laughs> song on Instagram and Facebook that will help you get viral content or mm. become viral if you post <laughs> it. Yep. 
Um, the oh. next trend that we have here is Royal Caribbean's Ultimate World Cruise. Have you heard about this? No. This is really cool. So it's a 274-day global what? cruise. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Chubbs is ready to go. <laughs> 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 well, what's really cool is that Gen Z, they a lot of those um people who have remote jobs yeah. can work on the cruise, but they're wow. traveling the world while they do it, which is really cool. Damn. And Gen Z is seeing the influencers on board as a new reality TV show because they're all posting content. You're with the same people for 274 days. And think Almost about it. Year. Shit. Yeah, um, I think I think it's nine months or something like That's that. It's too long, though, for me. It's, it's too a long, long, me. long time to spend with the same Rob people. Rob would miss me too much. On a boat. <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting, but many are. Wait, how now, much is it? Do you know how much it is? I don't know how. I think it's pretty expensive. It's how do we look this up and look at the price? Rob, can you get a price check for us? You it's do a price there. check while we're looking this up. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually interested to see how much it is. Um, but many Gen Zers are wanting to now travel the world and work remotely, and some are even talking about wow. ditching their rent for. Well, that's why. That's why I want to know the numbers because if it makes sense, like, damn. Yeah, if you can spend a year traveling the world. I mean, it even goes to Antarctica. I saw videos of them traveling through Antarctica Dang. and like waking up, you know, one day in ice and then the next day at a beach. It's wow. pretty cool. That's cool. So you know what? I could never in a gazillion years do that. I wouldn't last. There's no way. It wouldn't last that long. But the only thing that's really, really cool about that um, is just like being able to say did that. Like a lot of people go backpacking or do whatever. Mm -hmm. So for people who like the Lux. It's uh, Royal Caribbean's World Cruise. Um, but yeah, so so for me, that's too much. But also, if you're on a cruise for that long, keep in mind. Um, and I saw this on a documentary about cruise ships. So even though this one claimed that, that they didn't do this, so I'm not going to say they did, but I, I don't know if most do this or don't. But a lot of our, so our feces get put into a essentially this like filtration system mm -hmm. that takes out all the bad stuff yeah and makes it water again right so the solids i don't know what they do with actually i don't think i think that on a that, cruise yeah on a cruise the solids i'm pretty sure get put out to you know uh, i don't know where they do with that are I don't you about to ruin cruises for me <clears throat> i might oh, but they say that they hold on a second they say that they recycle all of the shower water all of the the wastewater that you know the the, the feces and it gets put into a program that makes it clean, drinkable water. And then you drink it. And then you reuse that water. Now, they said that that's not used with gas and whatever else. When you think about it, there's mo in most cruises, there's five, between 500 to 2,000 or more rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're on a cruise, most cruises are a week long, two weeks long, most cases. Um, so imagine how, how many times a day you go to the bathroom, right? Times that by 2,000 people. I'm scarred right now. This so this gets reused. So we, but the thing is, they never mentioned where they use it. They kept saying in, the, in this documentary that they don't use it for drinking water or for X or for whatever. They said that like that's very Maybe clear. Still the shower water because I don't want to wash my body with that either. Right. Yeah, but they don't know. Yeah. But Elon Musk, in a separate interview, has gone on to say that you know when you use, um, you know, because somebody said, oh, you know, what about the re resources we have? We're running out of water, and he's like. Our ability to make salt water into normal water is 100% the best way, you know, for us to keep, you know, and, and he's like, we don't have a water issue because we can turn anything that's already a water substance into clean drinking water. Hmm. So back to this thing, that's what this does on cruise ships is it makes everything clean water. But what do they do with that water? That's the question. We don't know. Do I'd like to it, find out. Do they send it to Rob? That's in the water bottles you're drinking all day. I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to find out. <laughs> they bottle it. They send it to Poland Spring. Rob's chugging. Look at him. He's chugging. Oh no. Jeez Louise. Did you find out how much it was? Fifty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars per person. All right, so fifty-four grand a person. So think about that. For so nine months. That's like living in the city. That's expensive. That's it like a, expensive. that's like that's like yeah. a Hoboken, New York, yeah, Cali like rent. Yeah, that's expensive. Um, but the problem is, though, is that like it's not a full year, though. No, it's not a full year. So I mean, that's pricey. That's pricey. But but here's the thing, though, right? This we got to think about. We don't know these details yet. But if you looked, if you looked this up, if that's all inclusive. Well, of food, I was just gonna say that. If yeah, food, food. If, if it's fifty four k of food, he'd be hitting. Oh my god! Come on, happy hour, this guy. <laughs> Tito's and Chubs. 
Come oh, on. Oh my god. He'd be, he be ripping it. Yeah, He'd be losing fruit money. He'd be losing the money on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the on the twenty seventy fifth day, he's gotta be at the bar. Run in the bar. <laughs> oh my god. Lobster tails going with him in the bag. But you know what though? That's the thing. If it's all inclusive, that yeah, makes I think it, a it is different. all inclusive. Because when you think Your about it, included, yeah. perfect example. Now, if you go to a restaurant, in most cases, just with a friend or a couple of friends, it's mm -hmm. at least two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars sometimes. At least, yeah. you know, um, which is nuts. Back in the day, it's like when you went when you're balling out, it was like one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. Now it's like you get you get a bread and a water, and it's one hundred and fifty. And so when you think about that on a cruise, if that's can you see if that's inclusive real quick? We gotta know. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. Right? Yeah. Well, no, because sometimes like most your, your cruises, drink package your drink isn't pa included, right. but right. your food is included. Your food is only included, right? Yeah. So you, but that, if you want to drink, you pay curious. a little extra, but yeah, yeah, that's right. a good point. Three meals a day plus some. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I love it. Joe, I love it. Joe, Joe, Joe uh, doesn't believe in the Gen Z working transparent stuff. I like it, Joe. <laughs> Listen, you know what? At the end of the day, the crazy part about each generation. It's just everybody has such stark different beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents typically, you know, are Gen Zs. Their parents are boomers. I was watching this, actually, and I wanted to show this. If you haven't watched, have you seen the movie Cinderella Man? No. Have you ever watched that, Chubbs? I don't think I have, actually. You have to watch Cinderella Man. If you haven't watched it. I have. Is it about numbers? No. No. But no. No. It's with Russell Crowe. It's back in the dang. It's, it's 2005. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so Megan was like three. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, I saw this and it's about a boxer um, in the Great Depression. Um, and he was like at the peak of his career and then broke his hand and then wound up like essentially losing everything and then like couldn't keep his kids because he his, he got shut off, his electric got shut off in the city. Um, and my whole point is, is like when you look at boomers and people who grew up at a time. So when I watched this, it motivated the shit out of me. But it was at a time, you know, boomers and you know, definitely boomers, of course. But they grew up in an era where you went to work. Because you needed to support and provide for your family. It wasn't about, oh, I love, you know, doing X, Y, Z. Right. It wasn't like, I want to go do this because I love this. It was like, no, go get a good job so that you can pay and, and sustain, you know, your family and your future and your life. And, and that's it. You know, done. Um, and then with Gen Xers, I feel like that's when it started to shift. It started to be like, all right, well, I still have to because st my parents still think that way. Right? Like, I got to go do what I got to do. I got to provide, whatever. Um, but. There's also a little bit, of, there's a little bit, a very small, tiny, tiny hint of, okay, you know, I, I want to also be able to enjoy my, my job a little. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have the millennials who are like, I mainly want to enjoy what I'm doing. Right. Right. With a little hint. Now it's the opposite. Now it's a little hint of like, but I got to go out there and do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have to, to go do what, what I have, I to, I have yeah. to do. And then you got Gen Z. Who is completely like, I'm only going to do what I want to do. Yeah, they can't be bothered. If it's yeah. not, if it doesn't align with their interests and their passions, right. Right. nope. Then they don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Which, listen, most people, the one thing I always say, and I'm always at, at odds with, with the majority for this, but when you truly think about it, okay? Like, it's perfect examples, like, with, with kids. Like, you know, my, my uh, yeah, Joe, great movie, right? Great movie. You got to watch Cinderella, man. Great movie. But... The one thing that, you know, that I always, that I always revert back to is like, for instance, when I first had, um, when me and my wife had our son, Johnny, you know, my mom and, you know, and, and Jacqueline's mom and, you know, and, and all the people that we know, like our, the women in our family were like, oh, when we had you kids, there was no video cameras in the room. It was just like the little sound monitors. Yeah. So we couldn't see it. Uh, and we didn't have these things on there. It's like, right now, like we have this thing where it, it tracks his, his heart rate, his breath rate. Like it's like a whoop mm -hmm. at nighttime. And. It's like, they're like, oh, we didn't need that stuff or oh, whatever. And it's like, we wouldn't do this or why are you doing that or vaccines or this or that. And it's like, at the end of the day, what it boils down to, what separates each generation is how much information did you have at that time? Right. That's and true. that is the crucial difference between millennial from, from Gen X. The, the, the huge divide on is that we have way more information at our fingertips than any generation ever, mm -hmm. point blank. And now Gen Z and Gen Alpha, which is my son, um, you know, and now my other two kids that are coming in, that's what they're going to be, Gen Alpha. And and they're only going to know massive amounts of information is at their fingertips at any time. Mm -hmm. So when you have a massive amount of information, guess what? You have the ability to make different moves. Right. You have the ability to make different decisions. And, and that's why most of these people think the way they think. Because they look at, historically, they say, 
well, my grandfather, like a gen, like a Gen Z, could say, my grandfather, you know, worked his whole life, hated his job, and then died early and never got to retire. Or they could say that even about their parents potentially, because again, Gen Xers still have that mentality. So it's like they're like, I don't want to do that. I would rather go make a living and whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like and, and enjoy what I'm doing, and I don't care about anything else. Um, so <clears throat> at the end of the day, I don't think there's a right versus wrong, right? I think there's just more information. And it's tough because, again, watching that movie Cinderella, man, you see a guy who, you know, they they had no they had no food. They had no money. They had nothing. The guy was like begging to get jobs because at the time of the Great Depression in New York, there was not, no jobs. So people had to keep farming out their kids. They got kicked out of places. They were homeless. They had nothing. They had nothing, right? right. And it's like, so you, if you grow up seeing that and then saying, well, I never want to live this way. I have to just get a job and get a steady job, you know, and when you see and you see you work your whole life you know, with your hands calloused and, you know, scars all over you from doing crazy stuff, you know, um, then you see somebody, you know, and you grow, you get older and then, you know, your grand or your great grandkids saying, well, I want to do what I love. It's like, they can't understand that. No. And that's why there's such a gap. Yeah. That's the only thing that I wish for most of the generational gaps is that we all just took a, took a second to say, well, because my parents grew up or their parents grew up not wanting to do what they love and they just worked to provide they're not going to understand, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to understand what you're saying about, I, I want to love my job and I want to buy Bumba socks and, you know, get Starbucks. <laughs> like they don't care about that because they never got to do those things and they didn't think about those things. They didn't value those things. They valued family. They valued working hard. Yes. And so like you can't, you can't look at them and say, hey, you know, you, you're wrong, right? Because that's how they grew up and they lived all of their lives. Right. If, if we grew up in their generation, right, we would be thinking the same way they did. And yeah. it's hard to change that thought process. And then to the contrary, right, they – and it's tough for them, but being in our positions as Gen Zs and millennials and whatever, it's like we grew up in a different time. So we can't we can't understand their their time and they can't understand ours. So it's just a matter of just acceptance, right? Like they're not going to understand us. We're not going to understand them. And that's okay in some ways. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, is that every freaking generation is so different and it's just, you know, doing what we can to make sure that, you know, we can – from a marketing perspective, tap into – what they what what their interests are what they like so that we can make sure <clears throat> that we can still build brands in an era where it's not easy to build brands anymore right you can't just build a good product have a good product it has to have a good meaning it has to have a good purpose it has to get everything so with that said you know we have to understand each of these generations and just accept and and figure out how to best best work with them absolutely um, and that's that's the bottom line yeah absolutely all right. The last Gen Z trend that we're going to leave off with is the Jeremy Allen White's Calvin Klein campaign that went completely viral. Again, it was a little spicy, as most Calvin Klein ads are. Yeah. Can you picture the typical Calvin <clears throat> Klein ad? Yeah. You know, guy in Rob, underwear Rob spread boxers. out. Yeah, essentially just like... On top of a rooftop? Yeah. So... <laughs> This campaign went viral, and what I personally love is how other brands are using it. So I'm actually going to just show this is a brand away. It's a luggage company who decided, well, since that campaign's <laughs> going viral, we're going to do the same thing with our <laughs> luggage. And it's it's shot almost identically on the you know, on a rooftop ledge in the underwear and it's showcasing how sexy this luggage yeah, can be, which is really good. funny. So um, just another way to showcase that that's if there's phenomenal. a trend that's taking place and it doesn't quite fit your market, find a way to make it fit and find a way to make it relatable. Because even if it's funny, yeah. people are going to recognize the campaign and then, mm -hmm. you know, attribute that um, success to you. So it's really cool. That's too funny. Like that's and that's the thing. Share it again, real quick. You know the one thing though that that I love about this, and it's, it just goes back to you have to, and it, and it stinks to say, but you have to just jump on the bandwagon, guys. You know it's it's funny, like <clears throat> something like this. It's not about just you know uh, putting out a like I said earlier. It's not about just putting out a good product. You got to ride the trends. You got to ride the waves now, right? So this is something funny, and the one thing that people say time and time again is that if you can make your your customer laugh, you can make them do a lot of things. Right. And so this is very funny. You know, it's it's riding the trend. Um, and overall, well well executed, right? So it's it's funny. And they put it on a rooftop. I mean, they put it on a rooftop, know, It's yeah. like, what's, what's better than this? And the, fantastic. the team even showed some behind the scenes of them um, putting this together. And the caption was like, 
we have to explain to our boss why we expensed extra, extra large underwear for the shoe yeah. because <laughs> it's definitely going to raise some flags, but it's hilarious. It's yeah. a really well executed marketing yeah. stunt. So that's funny. And then you have, you know, then you potentially have people like Calvin Klein who laugh at this and say, oh, that's funny. And maybe you share it. Who knows? You know, so there's, there's a lot of things you should be doing to ride the wind, the, ride the wave better yet of mm -hmm. Gen Z's and just the trends that are going on. Right. So, um, I think that's what we have yeah, for today, guys. That's all that we have. Um, you know, guys, first and foremost, you know, thank you for uh, tuning in. We're super grateful. Um, we're 15 days in. We are 15 days in, okay, to the new year. So I know, again, typically I end, I end off a little positivity going into the week. Um, and, and the one thing I just want to focus on is what I said earlier, which is, you know, we have to focus on the goals and our values. And the one thing, too, you know, I had to check myself. But it's like most of us don't even have values. Most of us don't even know, like, if we write down on a piece of paper, what is our true character, right? What does that character say, right? And I was one of them. I was like, I sat there. And for most of my life, I've been, you know, doing, you know, working and, and doing adapting social stuff. And I've always focused on business. And I never really sat down and said, well, <clears throat> if I write down my character traits, my values, whatever else, most people don't do that, right? So it's a good exercise to do that. But additionally, you know, whatever goals you set forth for this year, we're 15 days in, so I hope everybody's getting after it and sets themselves up for success this year. And we shared earlier, I like to read this. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but it says 90 days to form a habit. <clears throat> so 90 days, and that's a long time. I mean, yeah, it's a long it time. It's a long time. So you can't give up until at least March. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have don't to give up, going. but don't, don't give up now, especially, yeah. right? Don't give up. And the one thing I heard this um, in, uh, in, in one of my groups that I'm in, Sorry, I'm declining here with my with my uh, my nasal. Um, <clears throat> but in this group that I'm in, and you know, one of the one of the guys that was in it heard this somewhere. You know, obviously at this point, everyone hears everything already from Instagram and social. But he said, "It hurts and sucks just as much to be overweight than it does to, to put the work in and just not be overweight, that right? So or true. to not be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. It sucks just as much to be broke." And as it does to work your ass off to not be broke, right? Right. So the thing that most people think think is they sit in their own pity. Oh well, I, why is this always happening to me? Mm -hmm. And I hate that shit. It's like <clears throat> go put the work in because <clears throat> the opposite sucks just as much. So why not put the work in to get better rather than have the same level <clears throat> of of um, you know dissatisfaction, of depression, of of angst, of all these different things, of anger, than actually just putting in that work and putting yourself out there. Because either way, in most cases, right, that I've seen historically in my lifetime, is the people who don't focus on their health go a long time and then eventually they have nothing to do but focus on their health and it's typically a bad situation. And then it's too late. Same thing financially. I know people who... Don't get themselves set up. Don't work their ass off. Don't build their investments. Don't do things they need to do. Get to that retirement point, and then guess what? They're shit out of luck. Right. You know, yeah. I watched this really, really. This video actually almost choked me up a little bit. I was watching the video, and my heart does go out to teachers out there because teachers, I, I have such, I have such, such respect for teachers. Um, but most teachers go into retirement, and this guy went on TikTok. It was viral, and <clears throat> and he talked about how he was a teacher for like forty years. Um, and he said, you know, I'm so proud of what I did as a teacher, but now I'm going into retirement poor. Oh. And, and the, the tough part about that was, you know, he, he sat there and he blamed it all on the school system for not paying them enough. But, you know, I would read this book. It's a huge book or had, <clears throat> had read this book, um, Unshakable by Tony Robbins. And essentially set you up for success. No matter what job you have, they use, they use a case study of this one guy who worked for FedEx. And this is going back in the nineties. And I think he made like twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars a year. I think I've heard about this. And he put yeah. and he put the maximum amount he could into a retirement fund. By the time he retired, he had five million dollars. Mm -hmm. And 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 so but he, and the and the guy said, you know, in the beginning of doing it, FX, he's like, I had no money to do anything with, but I kept funding this thing. And then when I retired, at five million dollars. My point though is, at the end of the day, this whole teacher thing really shook me up. But most of us don't have the financial literacy to say. Well, how can I get better at my craft so I can make more? Or how do I, you know, build some investments on the side or start, you know, getting retirement funds or doing whatever? Right. And, and my point going back to the whole health, financial goals, you know, being present with your family, doing whatever, it, you're either going to be suffering because you're, you're so upset you didn't do it 
and have to, you know, uh, backpedal your ass off to get to it, or you just put the work in now. So my only hope for you guys going into the second week into the new year is I hope you don't have the mindset of having to backpedal because you know what? The one thing, again, I'll just go back to is no matter what, um, Oh my gosh, I forget how this guy said this, but you know, we all we all have to pay the piper no matter what. If we're if we're putting if we're putting we're not putting the time and effort and energy on our health, we're going to pay the piper. If we're not putting the time and energy in, you know into our financials, it's going to pay the piper. If we're not putting it into our family and our presence and, and and the love to our family, we're going to pay the piper long term. It's just we're always going to be in that bad position if we don't do it now. So bottom line is I hope you get into that mindset of execution in today and not tomorrow, um, you know, because again, everyone has that mentality. I know everybody who has that mentality. I know so many people who are like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll clean my room tomorrow. I'll clean my room tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Start my diet tomorrow. Start my diet tomorrow. And they never do. Right. And tomorrow turns into five years and then it turns into 10 years and it turns into 30 years and it turns into regret. Mm-hmm. And so I hope bottom line is, is that you have that mindset of do it today. Because as that book, the the power of now, or the whatever the hell it's called, um, says, tomorrow. I mean, yesterday does not exist anymore. It's done, right? And then the future, the future, it it it. it wait, hold on. I said that backwards. I think. Yeah, the future doesn't exist anymore, and the the future. I'm sorry, the the past does not exist anymore. The future doesn't exist. All you have is now. Mm-hmm. I hope that made sense. I just feel like I jumped. <laughs> that doesn't but, but either way, you know, all you have is today, right? So right. I know it's so damn cliche, but hopefully you utilize every single day. And and I'm going to throw out one last thing. And I think, you know, I saw this, obviously I, I've mentioned him a bunch of times, but people like Brandon Novak, um, who um, was former guy on, on uh, Viva La Bam and the movie Jackass and stuff. And he had a huge journey of being sober. There's a lot to learn. Um, when you hear about what people who are going through AA and going through that system, what they have to do, they live their lives one day at a time with sobriety. All they have is today, right? So they can't predict what tomorrow brings. They, they, they're not thinking about the past. All they can say is today, I'm not going to have a drink. Today, I'm not going to smoke. Today, I'm not going to do whatever. And for you and your goals, like there's something really good about that method of just focusing on winning the day, right? And and, and again, you know, when people keep saying one day, one day, I'm going to do this one day. Well, why don't you just win the day? You don't have to keep saying one day, right? So one day at a time, if you do something one day and you give it all you have, you have 365 days where you just gave your all, mm-hmm. guess what? You're going to have a freaking great year. Um, so I hope that for everybody listening in, um, happy Monday, guys. Get after it. And if you know an entrepreneur, a you know busy career professional, an executive, somebody's in sales that is looking for the trends and the thing to move the needle forward with brand and getting new clients and, and building their brands, um, you know, share this with them, right? So you can like, subscribe, um, you know, on YouTube. We do this every Monday at 9 a.m. So we'll see you next Monday, guys. Thanks for tuning in.